Okay, so what I did on these steps, um, I did take a 3 8 router and give this just a little round to it right there. That way it's not just coming over a, a directly square edge like that. It's got just a little round to it and that'll, that will preserve that edge from breaking down so fast. It'll help it out a lot. And I used to take my cutters, my tack strip cutters, and cut all of these on a 45 here. Um, I learned something here recently on one of John Starr's videos, as a matter of fact, the Fluorinator 2.0. Shout out to Big John over there at Starr Flooring for sharing this. Um, he puts them all on just regular like that, and then he comes back with his oscillating tool and cuts them off to be like that. Uh, that's what I have done this time, and it works out a whole lot better. Uh, whenever you cut this at an angle with your tack strip cutters, it makes this a lot longer of a cut rather than cutting straight across. Using tri tack sometimes it's hard to get a good angle, or else you gotta cut twice to get it. So, uh, using this bad boy right here, see I've got a two inch blade on it right there, I can zip it down whatever angle I want to there and it just buzzes right off nice and clean cut <sighs> no no breakage or anything like that the edge of that tack strip is completely solid just like it comes from the factory so that's a really really good way to do it uh, might try that out in the future yourself watch just how fast it is it, it does require a little bit of cleanup when you're done but that's okay because we're not about speed, we're about precision every day of the week. And if we can find a way to do it better, even if it takes a little more time, we're definitely going to do it better versus fast. If you don't know while we're doing this, this way we can run our pad all the way over to the edge of the step right here and it keeps the front of this nosing, keeps the front of the nosing right here just consistent and, and uh, just pretty looking. If the pad stopped right here at the tack strip, you'd have a little dip in right here where there was no pad. But because of this, I'm able to run my pad all the way over here to the edge and then down. So it's just, just better, better all the way around. Better look, better quality. And cutting them off like that right there with the oscillating tool is definitely better quality too. So once again, Mr. Steyer, Fluorinator 2.0. Thank you for sharing, my friend. And we now have our steps padded and ready for some carpeting. Ready for some carpeting. So right here. At the bottom of this, it's a little close from showing if you're looking in here. So I'll cut the pad back on an angle like that. And if I need to put me a little staple here to make that sink in just a little bit to go in behind there, I might be able to just uh, push it in there and with a little hot glue or something in there like that and it might stay, but just in case I left it manageable so that I can address it if needs be. But anyway, there be, there she be. Time to cut some rug. <laughs> So we got lucky, there's all of these steps except for two and then the very top piece that are exactly the same. So I it measured like 17 and a half foot. So I'm just giving myself a few extra feet just to be safe. I actually cut this at 20 foot when it was like a 17 foot 8 inches long uh, just because we got plenty and a tape measure 
will not go in the gully of the step and riser like the carpet's going to. So there's an extra inch, maybe inch and a half on every step. So I was originally gonna go 19 foot, and then I was like, man, I ain't gonna hurt nothing. Let's just go 20 foot, because I just had like a, a three foot left on this piece that I, that I was able to cut. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what it is, because this was a 23 foot cut, and this is what cut off of that. So I had a 23 foot piece that I was gonna get my steps out of, so I was like, might as well just cut it 20 foot. I got plenty. So, with that being said, I'm cutting it a little bit long, but again, I'd rather be safe and have a little extra to deal with instead of coming up. Oh man, I wish I had another inch on that. I could make it all. So, and I took some scraps and laid out underneath the edge of that whenever I row cut that side. Then, the six or seven inches that I cut off of that side, I come that far into the material so that I got good, good material to work with. So whatever I cut off of that side, I took and laid it down here. This is how much I cut off that factory edge there. So I got that much room, probably seven or eight inches uh, to get my, to get some good material. And I'm not working right next to the edge. So I'll take that full 20 foot piece, which is the same size as what I'm cutting on, and I place it right here under where where I'm going to be making my next cut. That way I've got one long solid piece to make my cut on, instead of having several little pieces like I did right there. So uh, a lot of times I'll actually take and latex the edge of these whenever I'm doing steps. It just helps uh, from breaking off rows and stuff like that if you're working with a loop pile carpet or a commercial carpet or something like that, but the elasticity or whatever you call it of this carpet is just a super good piece of carpet and I don't feel that I'm going to have any danger whatsoever of breaking any rows off the edge of this, so I'm not, I'm not concerned about it at all, so therefore I'm not going to uh, latex the edge of these. I think it's just pointless to do that. This stuff. Look you real close right here. Look you right, right down real close to the edge of that backing. So you can see the latex. There's a monk's cloth, which is the primary backing, and then you have some latex uh, adhering the jute backing to it right there. We can look at this piece and see a little bit better. So um, I can't be 100%, but I'm almost certain that this is a monk's cloth. The primary backing is, so you see that? So this is the primary backing, what the carpet is actually tufted into. And then you have a coat of latex, which is the rubbery stuff right there, see that? And then you have the jute backing, which is the secondary backing, adhering, uh, just reinforcing the tufts and, and such to the back, to the primary backing. So look, look at how that stretches out there. Look, I can't even, I can't even get it to pull right there. I mean that, no fear in this stuff at all. There we go. There we go, look at that. So this is what it looks like without the primary backing. I mean without, then, yes sir. I'm gonna leave you and I, I believe my other assistant's going to be taken off. Okay. So, which, if you could do, you just lock up the side. Anyway, you can see that the wool fibers are tufted through this monk's cloth. You can see here it kind of pulled through there a little bit before it started giving away there. See the holes? That's where it's actually tufted through there like that. It really gives you an insight on how to work with carpet if you know how it's made. It just helps out a lot. So that's why I wanted to show you this right here. So you can see the individual holes where that stuff is tufted in through there. And then after that, you have this jute backing adhered to the back of it just for extra stability and such like that. So if you was to stick this directly on the strip, it would probably pull just like you're seeing it happen 
right there just like that so now with that done with this on there you've got another whole layer of stability on the back of it so definitely definitely not going to snag that stuff just look at that come apart this is a really really well made piece of carpet and they did real good on this anyway let's get back at it like uh the wefts are made out of jute also looks like see that right there those are the weft yarns And the long ones that run this direction are the warp yarns. And it definitely looks like the weft yarns are made out of jute as well. I'm sure they are because this is an all natural product. And yes, right there is some. So yes, the wefts are made out of jute. There it is, yep. can't be a hundred percent that that's a monk's cloth because this is actually a, a woven jute right here what makes up that primary backing so I just don't know my friend I just don't know I've never seen any well you can see the other pieces here the white threads and then you got the wefts the white warp yarns and then the jute weft yarns it's two different types of material there but these are the chain stitches right here is what you see hmm interesting i'm gonna have to take a piece of this i'm gonna be going to for some more nfic classes i'm gonna take a piece of this down there and i want to find out exactly what this is if it is a if it is a um, a jute, I mean a, a monk's cloth or not, I'm kind of intrigued by that. Anyway, look at there and you can see the actual uh, gauge in between each rows by looking at how close the holes are. So that's the gauge, that's how much uh, gauge you got between each run of carpet whenever you're running a row. So, how could it do? That's why it's important to use the blade on the same side of this versus using the opposite blade and taking out all of that gauge right there. You wanna take it off one, leave it on the other. That way you end up with the same amount of gauge on your seam as they have here on the factory gauge. cock doo doo let's get to work. I'm using only cotton head on this kicker to do this stair install and I'm gonna come back and take care of all my edges here. Once I get done with kicking everything on, I'm actually not kicking, I'm just leaning into it to get my stretch. Again, this stuff stretches really, really good. So uh, what I wanna do is just get me enough down here. Are you able to see everything I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Okay, get me enough here, make sure it's not stuck on the riser tack strip there. And, We'll start the center, push straight forward in there, and it's actually stopping because it is snagging on the riser tack strip up there. So I wanna take and pull that back. Now it's completely free from my next step. You can see that get tight right there as I push. Sticking it right there on the strip, scooting over. See all that movement right there? You're able to see all this move, okay. And pull it loose right here. I'm holding it on the strip with my thumb here and pull it loose here so I got nothing holding it that it'll move and do exactly what I want it to do as I push. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. I'm gonna hold my hand here. I'm actually not going to because I want you to be able to see, but push that up and mash it on the strip. Same thing here. I'm going to actually take and pull this side up off the tack strip while I do this. I'm gonna hold it free so it don't snag right there. Push that up, get it nice and tight, and stick it. Now that's all I need to do for that. I'm uh, gonna be prettying it up now, because while that, yep, that is all nice and tight here, we still gotta make this right here gully look pretty, okay? 
So I'm gonna take my stair tool. You can hear that slipping over those tacks on the right. Okay, now I got that in there as much as I can right there with just freehanding it. Now I wanna take this extra little bit I got right here in the corner. I gotta make sure all of this gets tucked in. If this is up, and after doing a couple like that, this side will actually start being a little bit longer and a little longer and a little longer. And two or three steps of this being longer and it's gonna throw everything off crooked. So I gotta make sure it's all in here evenly or else I'm gonna end up with a crooked piece of carpet real soon. So I use my screwdriver to get that poked in there. Then I'm just gonna take my stair, nose, stair tool and I'm not gonna to try to get it all in there at once because if I just bang it all in there, and try to get it all at once, I'm gonna rip the carpet. It's actually gonna go right through the backing and out the carpet. So I wanna just do a little bit at a time, probably take me two or three times of going across this to get it all the way in. And you will hear, you'll hear the difference whenever it hits the bottom, whenever it hits the actual tread of the step, it'll sound solid instead of like it has give behind it like that. There will be a different sound and you'll know that it's in there as far as it's gonna go and you can stop. Oop, did you hear that? A little different sound. That's getting solid. Okay, I believe it's all good. Okay, now I've got this all in there evenly. We've got a nice goalie, a nice line right there. Take my mallet handle and rub it on the strip so that whenever I push up on my next one, it's gonna get a hold of them tacks and not come out. It'll be a nice, pretty goalie like this one right here. Look right down here. See this? Nice little goalie all the way across there. And it's nice and tight here. So that's what you wanna end up with. All right, <clears throat> we got these steps all done now. Everything is nice and complete. And it actually turned out better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be super ugly over here. Although I don't like how that sticks out. Uh, the other side, from looking from the other side, I just hate that right there, period. I don't like it at all. I had a friend message me last night actually and said uh, to build that out so it wouldn't be sticking out like that using a 5 16 plywood. Uh, I just don't like the fact of putting plywood, especially 5 16 to be this edge. He's talking about putting it straight over here and having it uh, just stick out a little feather to cover for that. You're also going to run into the problem of this if I'd done that. I would not be able to do this right here, what I did there. That's actually what I was surprised at. It didn't even turn out too awful bad. So this, looking from this side right here, it actually didn't turn out too awful bad. Um, I could have cut it like a, in the V shape, you know what I'm saying? Like put my tack strip back here a little bit like you do when you do the true cut method and then cut it at an angle a little bit long over here so that I could have folded that back in there like that and had it cover here. But if you do that, then you got the carpet bent backwards, smiling at you. So overall, I think I chose the best method, best way of doing this rather. Um, I might say, why'd you waterfall it? Well, I showed the, I showed the owner pictures of it waterfalled and pictures, uh, not of this particular carpet, but I showed him pictures of, pictures of uh, that diamond pattern carpet I did. That's some months back where I run them up the steps and hallway and stuff. And they was waterfall. I showed him that. And then the herringbone pattern I did here a while back that I bull nosed and I posted the sides and stuff like that. I showed him that. And they chose to do uh, waterfall. So left it up to them.
to uh, whatever they wanted to do there, and they chose waterfall, which is it easier? Maybe uh, the thing you'd have to do and the thing you don't have to do whenever you're doing a waterfall method, uh, you have to strip here and strip here rather than just here and kick it up. But because it is a waterfall method, you don't have to staple underneath of this lip right here. So it's a give and take, whichever you prefer to do. If you would rather uh, work it into this gully between the two pieces of tack strip, yeah, uh, waterfall is going to be easier. But if you would rather just push it up here, you know, make a line with your stair tool and shoot a couple staples in it and then come up, do your bull nose. It all depends on what you want to do. What's your, what's your favorite for yourself? I don't know. I, myself, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I, myself, I really like a waterfall method. I've done the Cadillac style, Hollywood style, bullnose style, whatever you want to call it. I've done so many of them throughout my life that it might just be refreshing to see a bullnose. I mean, a waterfall method since it's been so long. But anyway, I'm gonna finish getting... Uh, it's a little after five, so I'm gonna finish cleaning up, get my stuff out of here, and be gone, okay? Thank you guys for tuning in to The Daily Grind. Until tomorrow, FBSB's out.